Smith, I'm the Director of With Scotland and we are absolutely delighted to bring together this seminar series in partnership with the University of Dundee and the University of Stirling. Um, absolutely fantastic opportunity to look at working with children who have been neglected and who are at risk of, of harm from neglect um, and using creative practices to help. And then, but what we are interested in is the well-being side of it, so looking at um, things working for children because there is development of self-esteem, confidence, um, they are fe uh, feeling that they belong to the communities they are within and have a sense of ownership. Some of the research we did in the past, we, for example, found that the evidence base for ask-based approaches and its impact on children and young people, although there is evidence, but methodologically the research is not very strong and some of that um, and there isn't that much of research so you, um, the other thing we found was that there is a lot of really good practice happening but it never makes into any journals or any other ways of sharing it or disseminating it. In terms of research we've done some systematic literature review looking at the impact of arts on health and well-being, impact of creativity on um, again attainment, well-being, and what we found was that although there is evidence to suggest that um, there is a positive impact on children and young people in terms of all different aspects of subjective well-being or to do with sense of belonging, sense of um, competence, sense of com confidence and self-esteem, some of the evidence base is not very strong and therefore the research in this area uh, needs to be further developed and one of the main things that is missing is longitudinal studies and if you want to be able to see impact of any work on children and young people's lives we have to be able to follow them over a longer period of time to see not only what impact has been there and then but what's a longer term impact. find out from the young people themselves in terms of what they tell us or um, change or maybe things that change in terms of their behaviour or their relationships um, so through talking to people who work directly with the, the children or young people we can actually see um, you know observable changes in their behaviour but I think it's also important to to find ways in which we can uh, understand what the young people themselves are thinking and feeling. I think it's really important to share practice and uh, particularly using the arts and I think I think uh, as has been said earlier, the verbal language is so dominant that people who are art-based find it very hard to get their voices heard. And I do think it's the primary language of children and often disadvantaged people. So I do think events like this, but also I make a point of taking artwork along to case conferences. And I do think professionals need to learn our language as well as everybody being based on the spoken word, their potential given support and I think as we saw with the dance performance and I think with music performance with all the arts that children can reach their potential if they find that core of confidence within themselves and I think it really needs to be supported on every level and particularly in rural areas and in urban deprivation to let children know that they do all have that core in them that can be reached and developed. I think it's false economy to neglect it. And offer them the chance to talk about their story, and sometimes the story is quite, uh, it's been quite difficult, it's been a lot of loss and bereavement, uh, sometimes it's been abuse, but it has to be the relationship, so in that relationship building, I'm using a lot of different uh, skills and tools, sometimes it's, uh, I'm using some art material sometimes, sometimes it's visualisation, but that's a favourite of mine, I really I like that bit when I'm asking the young person, what we both do, we both close our eyes and we visualise a safe place 
I, I think it's about looking at the young person themselves and their own experience of how they've felt a shift and recording that. Not about all the stuff that I might look at theoretically, how, how this fits into something. And the way that I'm working with the young people is we do an evaluation at the beginning and we sort of map it down where they feel they are. And at the end of therapy, when they feel that they've reached that themselves, they can report back on how they're feeling and we measure that difference. They really enjoy having their voices heard and also practitioners really like hearing from the child. So I think it does have a big impact and um, perhaps yeah, time to take a bit of stock and actually put our resources into doing the work with children. Virginia, how do we know that we're making a difference to children and young people in terms of the use of arts-based approaches? Well, I think we know, uh, I think if you're a practitioner you know because you can see it, uh, that when children make a profound leap within it, um, they can never be quite the same as they were before and, and people want, for instance, a child who doesn't speak shows everybody that they've got a lot to say and contribute, then, then arguably they can never be quite the way they were before. Thank you.